Now, every week we give you moral maze, exploring and exploding and exposing the stories the other networks like to pretend simply don't exist. And you know that's true. Uh, this week, campaign life coalitions, Matt Wojciechowski, and I just learned the idiot's way to pronounce that, <laughs> and it's true, has the load. And how are you, by the way? Not too bad. Canonization weekend, so it's kind of a big deal. That's another so, part of the show. We can't yeah. talk about that right now, but we can talk about married lesbian trio from Massachusetts. Can we have a clip, please? Poly, polyfidelity um, is not something uh, seedy or something that's meant to be hidden away. It can be a perfectly uh, acceptable and functional uh, choice of, of life and love. It's all about me, isn't it? The, the first world problems, it's all about me. Marriage is supposed to be a child-centered institution. And I think this goes beyond the gay marriage issue. It's the idea that three parents can actually raise... Because one is pregnant? One's pregnant, and, but the, all, all three of them want to have their own kid at one point. So it's, with, with men who will donate? With, with... That's right, through IVF treatment. That's right. So it's, uh, it's definitely, like you said, it's a me, me mentality. I want to have a kid, and uh, I want to have two wives, and it's, it's actually Massachusetts in 2004, they legalized same-sex marriage, mm. and you now... See, I, I don't even think this is about sexuality as such. I don't, yeah. I, I think it's about, because you see heterosexual couples who, who will routinely separate and not care too much about the kids or be unfed, it, it, it's saying the children come first, and, and can a child really be raised by, by three parents and understand the balance of nature and, and who parents are, are really and will they be genuinely healthy and happy? It's a very good point and I mean in Massachusetts polygamy is not legal uh, but like that aside you have these three women who uh, two of them were married previously they met the third uh, one online at some threesome dating online website. <laughs> it gets better and yeah. better. I, I read I read a blog and they they I guess fell in love baking cookies or something like that together. Oh, it's beautiful. It's, it is beautiful but is that a euphemism for something? <laughs> I don't know <laughs> I don't want to know but it is very sad uh, ch children are commodities nowadays and this proves that. Yeah I, I do think so and I, and I I would think a lot of uh, gay, conventional, if you like, gay couples would really cringe at this. I think that this is a social experiment and you don't play those games with children. I mean, it, frankly, if they want to live together, that's their business, not mine. But once children are involved, it does become a societal issue. And I found it interesting. It actually says that one of them is, makes all the money, so she works full time. Yeah. And the other one is the stay-at-home cook and the other one's a stay-at-home cleaner. So, well, no, no gender caricature stereotypes exactly. there. Nothing. And nor in this one, transgender. I hope we have a photo of this one coming up. Transgender man can be breastfeeding coach. Do we have any pictures of that? I know there's one here, and it's very, very curious. Transgender man can be breastfeeding coach. Can he? Uh, apparently so. Oh, well, there he is. That's him. That's a bit of e. What's that? Yeah. Okay, I, 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 okay, I mean, what do we say about this? I don't know. Uh, uh, she was born a woman, wanted right. to become a man. Uh, uh, the bottom parts are still female. Hence, that's why she can Self-identifies as a man, so That's a right. Man. And uh, she wanted to, uh, she learned, uh, or she, she fell in love with breastfeeding when she had her first kid. So she wanted to become more involved in, uh, you know, the breastfeeding mothers groups and circles and whatnot. And Lalesh Lee Canada, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Oh, it's, yeah, uh, we used to be, we, when, when our kids were born, Lalesh Lee, famous. Yeah, there you go. So Very it's International Breastfeeding yeah. Support Group. Yeah. Originally, uh, they, on their guidelines, they only, it's a support group from women and mothers. He was very offended by that. Yeah. So originally, about a year ago, they rejected his uh, claims. Yeah. But just recently, uh, they've quietly removed any type of references to mother and women really? on the guidelines oh, of... That is sad. Of, so just to get this right, um, this person was born a woman, okay, became a man. That's so right. as, as, as I know uh, the, the logic of this, self-identifies now as a man, so it's a man. A and so we, we say it's a man. So if it's a man, men don't breastfeed, that's and that's right. the end of the story. That's right. And, I mean, this person, uh, they, they're the, I was reading his blog as well, and uh, he gets very offended when people see him breastfeeding in public. His son's three years old right now, so well, how, how he's still he, breastfeeding. He can't, him. Can he breastfeed? Uh, it's, it's some sort of pumping device. Uh, it's donor milk. Um, I'm, I'm not an expert in uh, breastfeeding. Again, this is not about sexuality. This is about what my, my dad would have said, complete bloody machigana. Th th these, these people, I mean, this is weird. It, it, this is not about a gay person saying, respect me for who I am. This is someone saying, I want everyone else to change because 
I, I, I identify now as a man, but I still want to do some of the things that are associated with being a woman. So all the women who go to with their new babies, it's beautiful and innocent and pristine, and they want to learn about nursing and breastfeeding, and it can be challenging, they could potentially now face this person and be very confused and unhappy. That's right, and the League actually said this is the first case in 56 years of well, I'm history. Well, surprised. And yeah, you're going to knock me down with a feather <laughs> every other but, week. But the fact that they, you know, they changed their policy because of this one person. Well, it might not change anything. It might be mere semantics. But uh, uh, just very quickly, what do we have here? Um, organ donor rule change may presume consent in Nova Scotia. So if you're in an accident, unless you've said otherwise, the organs will be taken? Your organs will be taken. I the state has full control of your body. And, and I mean, this draws attention to many different issues, uh, whether you believe in organ donation or not. It's fine. I mean, I believe in that as well. I However, know. I mean, the, this premature um, declaration of death, that yeah. is a very gray area. So, it, you know, I, I believe utterly in, in organ donation. It's a wonderful thing. It's crucial. We should be a part of this as citizens of this country. Um, but even though we do need more donations, more organs, the assumption that you have said yes unless you say no, I think is and it also puts, very dangerous. It also puts a lot of pressure on the physicians, right? When they have a patient yeah. here, do they do everything they can to... Uh, save their life, or do they kind of not do so much because they only be an organ donor? They could indeed. Sir, thank you very much. Thanks for having me.